Do the first game, please. You did the Escapist 2, now do the Escapist 1. Now do Escapist 1. Okay, now do the Escapist 1, please. It would be really cool if you played this challenge the with first the first game, please. Now do the Escapist 1. 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 If you ever decide to do it, I'd love to see this challenge done on Escapist 1. It's pretty different than Escapist, so I think it'd be interesting. Alright, I'll do it! Please! Please, just... Stop it! So, it seems that some of you wanted me to cover the original game as well, so here we are. I hope that all of you who have asked for this are happy, because I sure as heck have very mixed feelings about this video. Let's just get the formalities out of the way. The question for this video is obvious. Can you escape every prison in The Escapists without crafting? The rules are simple enough. Did you craft? If so, you failed. If you didn't, then you succeeded. Contraband stashes will be banned because it's luck what you get and luck if they even generate. If there is a way that is not reliant on luck to get items normally crafted through non-crafted methods, they will be permitted since they are, of course, not crafted. For the heck of it, all glitches are on the table because if they weren't, I don't think I would have the mental fortitude to take on this challenge and, to be honest, makes the game a lot more enjoyable to play for me. There are a total of 18 prisons for us to take on, each with their own little details that makes escapes rather inconvenient. I will not be going in the order they are presented in the selection menu as I value pacing in my video, and I'd rather not end with Santa's sweatshop. I will make a note of this now that the methods of escape that I use to get out of whatever prisons are possible may not be the most simplistic or even fastest ways but they are what I used when recording, so please don't leave in the comments something along the lines of, well, actually, you can do this. Speaking of that, I'll do my call to action right now and say that if at any point you'd like, you can drop a like if you liked the video, a dislike if you didn't, a comment to share your thoughts, or maybe even timestamp a funny moment for others to jump to, and subscribe if you want to see more of my garbage. Now then, I am Generic Mystic, and during that entire explanation that was completely, definitely padding for time, I already escaped Center Perks. Welcome to a nice little visual reference I have strung together for your viewing pleasure. As you can see, all the prisons presented to us are on screen, and right now, Center Perks fades to grey. This will help us keep track of what prisons we still have left, which will be nice for your viewing pleasure as we get later on in the video. For now though, let us see what the chili stalag flukes fluke? Flak? Cold Winter Place has for us. I know you probably weren't paying attention during the gameplay of Center Perks, so let's run through what I did there so that you can better grasp what is going on here. 
For our escape, we will need desks to shower luck upon us and provide a file, a roll of duct tape, and from the canteen, a plastic knife. It doesn't need to be a day one escape, I just am impatient. Due to the prison population tending to enjoy our existence in the easier prisons, we can immediately recruit some fellow felons to take down the guard that holds the red key. Just be careful to not rocket your heat too high, or else the tower guard will make quick work of you. Find them, dismiss the other prisoners, take the key, and carry your items and captive through the red door. From there, switch off the generator and take part in our first glitch. This How it works is simple. Begin your cut, then pick up your little bound buddy. This will trick the tower guard for some reason. Rinse and repeat until you get out. Hold on a moment, what happened there? Well, the assumption is RNG. The guards take some amount of time to spot when a fence is cut, and it could either be almost instantaneous or, well, long enough to get out. Thankfully, this will be the last time this unfortunate situation comes up, and we could just wait until night to cut if we wanted to, so this problem could be negated entirely if we wanted, anyhow. With that, a second prison falls, and we look towards First Peak Correctional and Shankton State Pen next. The method of escape is similar to our previous two prisons, but with an odd spin. This time we will be chipping the fence. Of course, the first logical thing to ask is how I am even capable of chipping a fence. That can be explained by hopping into the level editor. Uniquely, on Shankton tile set maps, there are three fence tiles, with the one in the middle acting as an obstacle as opposed to a fence. These tiles have been referred to as black fences for some reason. I don't know. The point is that they can be chipped. This means that we can do what we did before. Bind someone up, get a nice chipping tool, and break out of First Peak Correctional in Shank... and Hold on. I have a fix, and it takes the form of another glitch. What we just did is the warden note skip, which skips the note and makes black fences chippable if they otherwise aren't. So, um, woohoo, we got out! Now to finish off our easy prisons. There's a lot of special prisons here that have a variety of special locations and whatnot, so let's take a poke at arguably the easiest one to escape out of. Alcatraz. As a special feature of this prison, we need to acquire $250 and, at lights out, make our way to the boat for an easy escape. All we need to do is, well, get out of the prison. The front door is, uh, not something I am thrilled about trying, so let's just chip this wall. Yeah. Obviously, we aren't going to break it yet, just prep it for escape. Other than that, we just grab a plastic fork and wait by the wall. At evening roll call, break the wall, walk out and place it back, and make your way to the docks while ignoring the fabric of reality tearing apart. The prison will end up going into lockdown, but they can't really stop you at this point. Pay your way out and escape, putting an end to the easy prisons in our list of 18. But now that we've done all the simple ones, what's next? Well, let's take a different approach to breaking out in our next prison.
Welcome to Paris Central Pen, an extremely secure prison that finally breaks the mold and shows greater security than a single fence or wall. As you can see, the prison is completely encased with boundaries that we cannot chip through or dig under. The only way in and out are red keys, and the perimeter wall is thick enough that we can't chip through or dig under that as well, should we somehow make it out. The intended solution asks us to zip line out of the prison in a cinema-esque escapade, but that requires crafting, so we are at a bit of a loss there. This leaves the only other way in and out of the prison, the white door. There is no key for this particular door, rather it unlocks when enough guards in the prison have been downed at any given point in time, a process known as a prison takeover. This isn't the most ideal method of escape though, as it takes a while to set up with the number of duct tape rolls and med kits that we will need. Is what I would say if it weren't for a little glitch that I like to call item duplication. For this trick, just put some items in a toilet, open your profile, and hit escape at the same time to overlap the menus like so. Close out of the escape menu to get this glitched jumble. Open the toilet, you put the items in, close out of it, and open another toilet. You can take the items out of this toilet and close out of the menu, and congrats, you duplicated items. And it's repeatable. Infinitely! Next comes stat raising. I have nothing that can be used to speed up the process. Just get the strength and fitness up really high and you'll be fine. Just take care to remember that the stats degrade over time. Finally, in our prep comes the weapon. Each weapon has a damage range from 1 out of 5 to, well, 5 out of 5. Sadly, the best weapons are locked behind crafting, but the second best aren't. We can find baseball bats in prisoner desks and glass shanks on the prisoners themselves. With all that prep done, let's go over the basics of a prison takeover. When 40% of the guards have been downed at any point in time, the prison will go into lockdown, giving roughly 98 seconds to escape the prison. When 80% of the guards have been down, the white door will unlock. This means for 5 guards, the thresholds are 2 and 4, at 10 it is 4 and 8, and at 15 it is 6 and 12. Other numbers are possible in the editor, but the multiples of 5 are the only ones that appear in the main prisons, and as such, I will not go over them. The more guards there are, the more difficult the escape is typically, but thankfully for us, the takeover is simple enough to complete, and with red key in hand, we can leave out the front doors and escape. Now that was a lot of info for a single prison, right? Well, I have good news! This is the only reasonable way I could find to escape Camp Epsilon as well. So the fun gimmick with this prison is that almost all of it is outside, as in these are the only places where snipers won't attack you for having 99% heat. That is not a lot. How are we going to fight our way out if we are confined to a single area for the entire thing, one may ask? The answer simply rests on timing. Once the in-game time hits 2300, the tower guards will leave their posts until the clock hits 600, giving us plenty of time to escape during the night. What this means for us is downing one less guard than the threshold for lockdown during roll call, and then just going berserk once lights out hits. If a single guard notices that you aren't in your cell after a bit of lights out, you will be sent to solitary. This is way less than ideal, so ideally, you will have to knock down and bind all ten guards in the prison. Additionally, you will need to wear a guard outfit as the guards spotting you in regular attire during a lockdown also just sends you to solitary for some reason. Anywho, it's just like before, but way harder. Find the ball, take the red key, and mosey on out. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
mosey on out. Well then, we are already a ways through all the prisons available. Hard to believe it's flown by so fast already. Thankfully, we have a lot more to go, so let's just jump into our next prison takeover in the depths of the jungle. It begs to be asked why I have saved Jungle Compound for now when Camp Epsilon clearly seems to be the more difficult one. And that comes from what you are intended to do to escape. Progression-wise, the Jungle Compound is the first prison that asks you to acquire a specific item to escape, with the case this time being the signed papers. This requires us to craft, though, so we can't exactly do the intended method of escape. Looking at this slightly outdated map that I have, we can clearly see that the jungle is completely surrounding the boundaries of the prison, so getting out is not the easiest. Thankfully, to escape, we only need to hit one of the bounds of the screen, be it above or under the ground. And there just so happens to be a thin line of foliage that we can dig under to get out. Great. Now, what do we dig with? Well, without crafting, we are left with only two options, a plastic spoon and a trowel. The spoon has laughable durability and only takes 4% of the ground at a time, while the trowel has decent durability and takes 8% at a time. I think we both know which I'd rather use. How do we get a trowel? Randomly on prisoners, and there's no indication that any given person has a trowel on them, unlike the glass shank, which is visibly equipped. Great. Why can't we just dig out during the night? Well, that's because the guard patrol can take the guards out and around the perimeter wall to spot any tunnels I may be digging to get out of the prison itself, and I'd like to not deal with that unless I absolutely have to. The problem is, like before, I don't want to chance a guard noticing I'm not in my cell during the night. So I have to down all five, get the trowel, and then dig out. And I have to do this all in roughly a minute and a half. Thankfully, there's another little quirk to exploit. Welcome to something I like to call Guard Disarming. This one is probably the most simple trick to do. You just take the baton a guard has equipped, and as long as you don't reload the day or quit the game, the guards will be weaponless, making them much easier to take down. With all of that prepped, we can down the guards, bind them up, dig down and over, letting us... Come on. All right, let me try this. Are you serious? I am not pleased with rock luck. Thankfully, the rock spawning is only, well, luck-based and not something that will always occur. We could prep with a crowbar, but I can't be asked. So with only a smidge of favor in our direction, we can escape the jungle. We now have eight prisons defeated, which is nice, but we ran out of tricks again. Thankfully, this next one allows for a lot of shenanigans. Let's begin with Fort Bamford. From a glance, this prison is similar to Paris Central Pen with the thick walls and singular entry point. The difference this time is that I really couldn't care less about doing a prison takeover for this place. Instead, we are going to do one of the most game-breaking and useful glitches for this run. All we will need in prep is to get a spare outfit and take off our garments. Do the menu trick from before when duplicating items, but this time open your desk and place the garments in. Close the desk and reopen it, taking the garments out. Then open your profile, put on the clothes, and close the menu. Finally, reopen the menu and voila! You just turn some clothes into a fully functional cell key. So what exactly does this do? We don't need a cell key to get out of our cell if we just aren't in it to begin with. Well, uh, the escapist didn't account for the thought that a player might, let's say, swap the keys on the guards around. 
Which means, well, we can just get any key that we want and we won't be sent to solitary for it. The guard keys can be used a total of 10 times before breaking, so be very careful with when and how you use them. But also, we can just duplicate them. <laughs> now then, let's go over the actual escape plan. Go ahead and make a yellow key, down the red key guard by either your own hands or that of other prisoners, swap the keys and take the outfit for disguising purposes, and prep two files, duplicate them if you want to, for a fence. Check in with the evening roll call and then mentally prepare for the obligatory stealth segment. We will need to go through multiple contraband detectors with no-no items, so just hide in the shower since you can loop around and maybe avoid guards. Wear the guard uniform, and if for some reason your guards glitch like mine did, just run away and try to lose them by getting enough distance. Remember that foliage counts as walls for sight when doing this. Once safe, shut off the generator and start cutting the fence. Typically, you'll need to do two rounds of generator shutoffs if you want to play it safe, so just take your time, cut the fence, and get out of the fort. Now then, with this glitch available to us, we can, um, hold on, I'm getting something on the airwaves. Oh, um, yeah, I guess we can look at this now. So, we're gonna look at the tutorial of all things, and instead of explaining it with words, I'm just gonna let this play out. Two more prisons off the list, but uh, swapping out what key a guard has only takes us so far. Most of the time a prison is surrounded by a perimeter wall and a white door, or even worse, just being a wall and some other obstacle that can just be impossible to chip through. Keys aren't going to be the answer to everything, and I don't want to keep doing prison takeovers because, well, that gets rather boring. So instead, let's look at another option while escaping the band camp. So like with Camp Epsilon, there is a lot of outdoors and not a lot of indoors. Also like with Camp Epsilon, 
The most direct route of escape for us is a prison takeover, since that brings us to the intended place to escape, that being the boats here. That takes a lot of effort, though, and I don't want to do that. Looking around, we see a little piece of foliage blocking us from just walking to the left bound of the map, so why not just dig under it? Well, the devs kind of thought of that approach, seeing the reinforced blocks lining the way out of here and all. It's a simple solution to block choosing escapes, but wow, does it suck that they just put something we can't dig through in the way of us digging through it and getting out. Are you confused? Uh, let's take a look again in Jingle Cells. We load in, and as preparation, we get a trowel from an inmate and duplicate it along with some chocolate, since we will be digging more than 20 times. We then wait for evening roll call, check in, and run to the north to the gate, and once it ticks the lights out, we dig down. We obviously get walled by this block, but by doing some tricky mouse maneuvering that you can just see here, we can actually just dig through this block. From there, we dig forward one more tile and then dig up, and that's another escape for us. As you can see, there are only six prisons left for us to beat, and, uh, these are some of the hardest to get out of. Of the six remaining, Santa's sweatshop is the first we will tackle. Looking at the map, we can really only see one point that we could escape out of, that being the tip of the tree. Like with before, we can either fight our way in there or dig our way in. I prefer the digging option as it asks us to set up way less, but we have a bit of a problem. The closest point that we can dig in from without getting spotted is here. This means we have to dig underground three times, which definitely puts a strain on time and resources. Additionally, during our prep, we can only put so much chocolate up there before a guard could spot what we are doing and take any of the items there. And I'd like to save time by not going back and forth with trips. Finally, because of all the digging we would do, one trowel isn't going to cut it, and all the boulders we could encounter makes the durability of chipping tools also a problem. I only have so much space in my inventory, and with the limited time I'll have for the escape, I want to save as much of it as I can. So we are going to do yet another glitch, but this time it's a variation of one we have seen before. By simply performing the yellow key glitch while having tools in our inventory, they'll turn invisible and gain infinite durability. Very useful for us because it creates an endless crowbar and trowel for our escapes. So naturally, to finish off preparation, get a guard uniform and infinite durability, a trowel and crowbar, and wait for evening roll call. You'll of course want bed sheets on your cell bars with guard opinion at a decently high level, and should your name not be called, go to the top left of the map, where the chocolate waits for you. As soon as the bell rings for lights out, dig down, over, and up into the fenced area. We will then want to dig from the top right corner of this area and do a reinforced block dig through to the sleigh. We dig from the top right, as the hole has been spotted by any guards that enter if it's lower for some reason. Once through, we need to dig from the very top with one more reinforced block dig to escape this absolute marathon of a prison. Okay, that was awful. Let's go for something else with maybe a bit less travel time on digging. How about, um, escape team? Alright, so let's not waste time. The entire perimeter is surrounded by either electric fencing with no generator or tiles we cannot chip through, so we have to dig under. 
there are reinforced blocks lining the underside, so we need to, of course, take through that again. The problem is now getting the trowel. In case if you haven't noticed, there are only three other inmates. This means few checks for us each day, which honestly could amount to weeks of waiting in game. Thankfully, it doesn't take that long at all. That's a relief. So we go, wait for roll call, dig down, and get sent to solitary for being out of our cell. So here's the main problem with this prison. The guard patrol will take the guards directly into our cell. Wonderful. In theory, we could initiate a prison takeover and bind every guard in the prison, but as seen with Jungle Compound, we barely have time for even five guards, let alone ten. So that idea is out the window. What about blocking the door to the cell with desks? Uh, yeah, they just walk through that and check anyways. Uh, how do we do this? There isn't anything else I can do except taking a moment to pause and think. Yeah, I have nothing. Never mind, I think I do. And I think that trick that will save our run is something we've seen before in this very video. Taking a little peek back to Jungle Compound, we can see that I do something widely known as pause buffering to my advantage. As one may guess, pausing and unpausing the game is the length of what you do to make this trick work. Yeah, it looks goofy and is terrible for gathering footage, but there is legitimate usage. Every time we do a pause buffer, the waypoint to which the guards go to are changed. So by repeatedly changing it, it is extremely unlikely that they will have time to enter our cell. Now for the fun part. As soon as it hits lights out, assuming you aren't getting searched, immediately start digging down at the wall. You need to waste as little time as possible because once the guards are able to call you missing, they will not hesitate to do so. At the same time as you dig, pause buffer throughout the entire duration of your escape to not chance getting found out. Once underground, do a reinforced block dig and try to nail the glitch first try to save time. After that is one more dirt over and one up, and then you get out. So we have one more trick for escaping to our name, but is it useful elsewhere? Well, yeah, it is. Let's take a quick look at London Tower. To keep it short, we have an electric fence in the way, need to write a key, and guards can enter our cell. This means we need to generate a yellow key, train our stats to take down the guard that has the red key, dig under the fence because I can't be asked to find the generator, which means infinite durability and reinforced block digging, and pause buffer the entire escape. Is there anything special to note about this prison? Well, sure, we get cool sound effects as we're leaving that seems to be exclusive to this map, so I, I don't know, that's noteworthy, I guess? Other than that, though, we just use the red key to get to the docks and get out. Well, we have three prisons left. Three of the most daunting prisons, all put off for last. There isn't any other choices at this point. So let's just start. Out of the three, let's do the one that people probably were looking forward to the most. It's time for HMP Iron Gate. There's a lot to go over, so let's just start. We are on an island surrounded by water, with the intended escape being to craft a boat and sail off at the dock. We can't do that, so we need an alternative. 
there is a close enough point on the right to dig down and hit the border, so that's that problem dealt with. Next comes the white door and perimeter wall. What we are intended to do is go into the building to the left of the white door and use a grappling hook to get down and outside of the perimeter wall. That also requires crafting though, so the only thing we can do is dig under the door. We will come back to this point later. After that is the issue of getting out of the prison and electric fence perimeter. In a best hypothetical scenario, we can acquire the red key to get through both doors. Unfortunately, that would require downing the guard that holds the key, which is a problem because every guard has a stun rod, which instantly knocks out anyone that is hit by it. So we can't leave through the doors, and we can't entertain digging under them due to the sheer number of guards in the prison, with any single one passing through spotting any tunnel progress. What about the roof, though, through the maintenance shaft connected to the janitor closet? Well, that would require avoiding spotlights, zip lining, and going up and down roof levels with rope and the grappling hook. We would need to craft the zip line hook and the grappling hook once more, so we are at a loss again. But what if there was another way up? Well, there just so happens to be through the ductwork which leads to this fence on a building outside of the electric fence perimeter. We can get here by purchasing a stepladder and using it in the janitor closet outside of the view of the guards. We do have to cut through a lot of slats, but we can make it outside into the fence, but we can't cut it because the snipers will notice it is damaged come morning. And even if we were to cut it, we wouldn't have the energy to cut, dig under, through and up past the white door, and then dig under and through to our escape, given we only have two inventory slots already used for the trial and crowbar. So are we at a loss? Have we finally been beaten? Is there really no way out that doesn't involve cutting the fence? Well, this game is really janky. Janky enough that using a rope to traverse rooftops doesn't work that well, like, say, to get past this fence and land conveniently on the ground. But what can we do with this? Well, this allows us to exit the prison during the day with the guard uniform on, and with that, we can place chocolate bars by the spots we want to dig in preparation for the escape. We'd have to be fast, though, as our heat is rising with us in view of the snipers. So we really are all prepped for the escape now. An unfortunate note to mention is that should we be unlucky, a guard could notice we are missing during the night should they pass by our cell in an odd way. This means that once again, we must pause buffer the escape. So we wait for our evening roll call, check in, do the infinite durability glitch to our trial and crowbar, hop up in the vent, swap to our guard uniform, grab a bundle of rope, and fill the rest of our inventory with chocolate, and then just wait. Despite it being lights out, we still need to wait for the snipers to leave. We need to save as much time as possible though, so we will leave prematurely and have our heat tick up to minimize the risk of our cell being found empty. We then begin to dig. A worrisome thing that can happen is a guard coming to a waypoint at about here. Should this happen, we just have to hope that they don't spot us or the hole we are digging, but it seems to be obscured enough that they don't see it. Once on the other side, we need to recover our energy as much as possible and cover up the holes just in case. From there, it is a sprint to where we need to be. It is now the final dig, this time just shoveling soil, all while still pause buffering. From the pure adrenaline, we can break through and escape HMP Iron Gate without crafting. Out of the two prisons remaining, I think that it would be best to tackle duct tapes or forever first. So let us take a look at the penultimate prison. This is the final DLC prison in our journey, and it is a unique experience. To start with, there are no snipers in this prison, so as long as we can avoid the guards, we can do whatever the heck we want. Next is that with all other special DLC maps, there is a unique way to escape, 
this time being to launch a rocket in the center of the map. And like all other special DLC maps, some crafting is required to use the rocket, so that method is impossible for this challenge. Finally, Duct Tapes Are Forever features a lot of different items to instantly knock out inmates and guards. Not required by any means, since we can already raise stats, but it is a nice thing nonetheless. So, how do we get out? Well, loading into the prison puts us at the leftmost end of the map, and that looks like more than three tiles, so we are out of luck with that side. As for the others, one glance at the map on the wiki says all we need to know. There is no possible way for us to escape from underground. Um, I'm out of ideas. Hold on, let me plug this up. What do the speedruns do for this prison? What? So, as it turns out, the giant walls made of rock were never classified internally as obstacles, but rather as ground tiles. Hilariously, this one oversight makes this prison possible to complete without crafting. But I'll take it! So... We have a single escape left. From the very start, we knocked out each prison one by one with their own little tricks and gimmicks until only one remained. My fellow entities of the interwebs, welcome to the end of our journey in the heat of the desert sun. Welcome to San Pancho. If there was any prison that would stop me, it'd be this one, so let's just get into this by taking a look at the full map of the prison. On the outermost reaches of the map, we have a standard perimeter wall. This can be chipped, so we will need a crowbar for our escape. Next comes this squirrelar road. A jeep patrol will drive through this much like the one in the jungle compound does, but as long as we wear a guard uniform, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. After that is the not-so-visible layer of landmines, which are exclusive to this prison. Through some testing, I have proven that no, you cannot run through a minefield and expect to not be blown up, so we will have to dig through it. As if it wasn't bad enough, we additionally have to get through an electric fence, which, you know, is an inconvenience, but really only is a terrible obstacle when it comes to the guard patrols. As a special feature of this prison, the guards will not enter the area the prisoners exist in other than the main three for specific blocks in the daily routine. This means that they are patrolling the area outside the main prison walls, which means that they are almost always strolling by every point of the fence. Finally, there is the issue of getting out of the prison itself. We can shift through different walls and hop off the roof if we really wanted to, but that doesn't have great consistency and would mean we have to bring a chipping tool with us to get back in, should we have reason to. Well, that's a lot. So let's just take it a step at a time. Is there a way to get the red key? Yes. How do we do it? Well, by going into the delivery job room and triggering the camera, a guard will come to check it, which could be, for example, the red key guard. We can down them and swap the key, same as before, so that's the problem of getting out of the prison itself dealt with. Alternatively, you can just scratch a wall while in view of a low-opinion prisoner, and it'll also work. Next comes getting through the electric fence. Well, I'd rather not deal with the guards, so I guess I'll have to dig under it. The problem is, where do I dig? 
Well, the only spot where we can even have a chance is this small maintenance shaft in the side of the wood and sheet metal storage. Every point on the exterior is checked by guards, and every other point on the interior is also checked. So this is all we have. Something is better than nothing, though, so we dig down, expand our underground area for chocolate storage, and as we finish by chipping away this boulder, we see the worst possible scenario in the faint light. Underground electric fencing. This is the absolute worst case scenario. We have to go through an electric fence. Okay, okay, it isn't that bad. Where's the generator? I don't see it on the map anywhere, so maybe it's on the roof? Okay, yeah, yeah, it is on the roof, surrounded by fencing, so we can't even cut into it without the sniper spotting it in the morning. But maybe, maybe we could have a chance of cutting in, turning off the generator, running to the tunnel, cutting the fence and digging out? Maybe? No? No, even if we did, we would still need to dig through an entire minefield without our tunnel being spotted by the guards and jeep patrol. But why is that an issue? Because we can only go through two tiles from open ground before the game refuses to let us dig any further. Well, we could pull a Dungeons and Duct Tape a la Escapist 2 and dig little holes to extend the tunnel. That could work, except for the fact that I physically cannot do all that in a single night. That's it. I can't do it. There's nothing I can do about this. It was always, always going to come down to this prison. It's just not possible. You were the final obstacle in our way of proving that the entire game was possible without crafting. You were the one thing that stood in the way of glory. You were the single prison that blocked us from proving the impossible possible. You are my antithesis. It was always the prisons that made digging to do a perimeter breakout mandatory that stood in the way, that made everyone doubt it could be done. They were the ones that made it impossible. <sighs> Look at me. Once the one that dared to take on the belief that what seemed impossible was impossible, to prove those more knowledgeable than I that they were the ones in the wrong. I was the one that proved that couldn't was could. And here I am now, the one that could not. Let me take a step back. I need to look at the bigger picture. Tunnel visioning on the issue at hand won't solve anything. It'll just send me on a negative feedback loop. Breathe in and out. Alrighty. Let's do this. Before we can even deal with the underground fence, we need to make it over there. As previously mentioned, we would need to dig a little hole above us to extend the reach of our tunnel. This is a problem due to the guard patrols, but there are a couple of things we could potentially do to help. The first is low opinion for prisoner roommates. Normally, this would be a bad thing. Once midnight hits, they'll call for the attention of the guards because you aren't in the cell, and a guard will come over to investigate. Seems simple enough. Well, for San Pancho, I can say that this mechanic is definitely bugged, as the majority of the time, the guards will not even get close enough to the cell to notice I'm missing, opting instead to enter the shower room or hover around ominously in the courtyard. And because the prisoners keep calling for attention, the guards will stack up a lot. This means for us that a majority of our potential issues are inside the prison while we are outside. This makes things a lot easier, but there is another small trick we can do. By dropping a contraband item on the ground, a guard will divert their attention to go pick it up. Sometimes this will completely reroute wherever they are going, which provides an additional safety net for us while digging. This is hardly a fully safe method, as testing has shown that some guards will continue to their set waypoint anyways. 
So with all that arranged, we wait for a bit past midnight, and then when a guard just leaves from checking the area, we need to dig up at, set down your contraband items, and get to traveling as fast as you can. We are making progress bit by bit, and losing any progress can hurt. Now for the fence itself. We need to do something not intended to get past it. We just have to. Hmm. If we could dig the reinforced blocks by quickly moving our mouse, maybe the same would hold true with the rule being that it has to be done underground? Yeah, wow, that worked! Well then, now I think it's best to dig up and reposition myself to a place where the guards cannot spot the tunnel. Okay, keep digging it is. As we keep going through, it becomes increasingly difficult as we have to juggle the detection of the jeep, the patrols of the guards, and the landmines strewn about. A huge tip to know is that the jeeps and guards only have a limited range of about four tiles for spotting tunnels, so use that to your advantage. When within the range of the jeep, you have to watch the clock to know when the vehicle will come and cover up your evidence of digging. Once far enough away from the minefield, wait for the jeep patrol to pass and begin digging up with your guard uniform equipped. Once out, immediately cover up the hole and get over to the left side of the road and start heading down. Wait for the jeep patrol to pass again and start chipping the wall. Keep chipping and chipping like your life depends on it, and once all is said and done, strut out like the champion you are. So I guess the answer is that, yes, it's possible to escape every prison in The Escapist without crafting. This video took a lot longer than I would have liked to come out, but I'm just glad it's done and people aren't going to ask for it anymore. Anywho, let's get on to the credits and I want to lead off with the person that helped me immensely with this video. My name is I Like Turtles 14, and those speedrun clips you just saw were done by me. And I also provided the assets for this video, and I was also, quote, generally being a lot of help, unquote. Go check out my YouTube channel, I Like Turtles 14, to see more of my awesome speedruns. Next, I'd like to give a begrudging thanks to the fandom wiki for the Escapist one. For more basic information like which keys are on which guards and the majority of maps I used in this video. I wish to give thanks to the Spriters resource for the Jank Band Camp map that was on the website, as the quick visual I used for it would have been even worse without it. I also want to give thanks to the general community at speedrun.com for the guides provided, particularly the glitches guide that lists some of the glitches I performed in the run, and then some. The creator of the guide has since deleted their account, so I apologize that I cannot credit you by name. Finally, all footage I have gathered will be in a playlist that is linked in the description, in the order of the prisons as presented in the menus this time. Now let's run through the obligatories one last time. If you like the video, then hit the like button. If you dislike it, then dislike it and uh, drop a comment to share your thoughts, what I can improve on, or just time stamping a funny moment, I guess. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content show up for you and ring the bell so you can be notified. I prioritize quality over quantity, and uh, I just really want to make videos that I can be proud of. I have been Generic Mystic. Thank you all for watching. And until we meet again on the interwebs.